All right, you guys. I am excited about tonight and thank y'all for being on and thanks to you, those of you watching the recording tonight. I have a few things I want to share with y'all, um, but we're going to make it pretty quick because I know a lot of people have a lot of things going on right now. Um, so I wanted to share with you all, uh, first off, the Mindset Detox kicked off today, which is awesome. Hopefully you guys have some new people in the group that are participating. If not, it's not too late to get them involved. There is a prize giveaway every single day. So it's really good. It's good um, conversations to help people get started. So I would definitely be posting and sharing that throughout the week. And um, just know that we will be doing one every single month. So it's a really great way for you to begin conversations and to help um, get people like involved. Um, one thing I wanted to talk to you guys and really just like paint a picture for you tonight about is seasons of network marketing. And sort of the, you think about the seasons of a year and you think about, you've got fall, you've got winter, you've got summer, you've got spring, and you have different seasons and different seasons bring different holidays. They bring different, you know, they bring different um, timing, you know, whether it's daylight savings time or not, they bring different clothes. There's all these different seasons. They bring different feelings right there are the seasons of winter and sometimes when it's a little cooler that people feel a little down and blue and they don't get out as much and you know then there's this feeling of summer where people are a little bit happier and just like there are seasons in our life and in relationships and in our world there are seasons in business and one of the the biggest seasons is the up in the down season. I was just having a conversation. Um, she's not on live tonight. I'm sure she'll be watching the replay, but I was just having a conversation today about the seasons. And typically what happens is that people will have a high season and then the next thing they know they're in a low season and they have a high season and a low season. Here's the thing. It's going to happen there. Is, I can guarantee you whether you're in a high one or you're in a low one, the other one is coming right around the corner. When I what, what I want you to think about with seasons of network marketing is if you can get through the low season and every time you go through it, it gets easier. You're like, this is just a low season. How can I get out of this low season, right? And it doesn't have to necessarily be, you, know, you don't have to think of it as low. You can just think of, hey, there's not as many people. I'm having to work a little harder for conversations. But then the next time you're like, I can't keep up with all these leads, right? Um, in the different seasons and knowing whichever season you're in, you're doing action items to make sure that, that, that the high season stays longer, that, that next high season, you may drop into a low one, but it's not quite as low as it was four low seasons ago, because what happens oftentimes when people say they fail at their business, or they just didn't, it didn't work out for them. It's because they quit in a low season. And it's honestly like that, almost that three feet from gold. You're digging, you're digging, you're digging, and you're right there at gold, but yet you stop before those last three digs to get there. But you're so close. And so if you really think about it and you start to think about the seasons of just truly not giving up when you're in those, and you may be thinking, well, it's easy to think that, but we get in our heads, <laughs> We, we get in our heads, we start saying we're not worthy, all of those negative things start, start getting louder in our brain. I want you to go back, and those of you who, um, who follow some of the, the stuff I'm reading, I am right now reading um, John Maxwell's, um, if you've ever heard of the 21 Laws of Leadership, but this is like his workbook. And it dives into 21 different leadership sort of laws. And there was one that I was reading about last week. I was like, I have got to share this with you guys. And it's the, it's the law of process. Okay. You can Google it and like learn more about it. I'm sure there's a ton of stuff online about it, but it's John Maxwell's law of process. And when I was thinking about being in one of those low seasons, how do you get out of the low season? And if you have the mindset of the law of process, it will help you through that. So I'm going to briefly explain like how I personally interpreted it. 
and how I think it can impact you in those low seasons. And I'm going to look at some of the notes because I, I made some notes when I was in when I was in the midst of reading it. So the law of process, if you want to see where something develops into a champion, you look at your daily routine. OK, so if you want to think about where you want to be in that champion, what does your daily routine look like? Can you map out a fight plan or is it a life plan? And I loved that, that way of thinking, like, is it something that you are just like fighting for or is it a life plan? Because here's the thing. If you cheated that day on your income producing activities, you may not see the results that day, but you'll see the results in a few weeks from now. If you're not growing at the rate you want to grow at, most likely it's from something that happened weeks ago. Right. I know I can see that actually shaking her head. I can see that when I've taken time off, when I've had a rough time, like in my in, you know, my where I've had been pulled away from being able to do my income producing activities. I don't see it right then, but I see it before. So instead of me thinking, oh, I'm in a low season of life, changing your mindset. What if you change your mindset and said, this is just sort of the law of process, right? This is sort of, you know, I had that really tough time. I had a sick child. I had vacation. I had a, you know, a time where I wasn't feeling good or gosh, I just was really out of it for a week. I just was too, I was tied up. I was doing other things. So therefore now, because of those lack of actions or maybe my lack of intensity of actions, here I am now in a lower season. I think if we can actually start to realize that that is often how we end up in low seasons is because of the lack of action or the lack of intentional action, then we stop beating ourselves up because it's not about you. It's not about people are not saying yes to you or they're not saying yes to what you're offering. It's the fact that you were just really busy in that time and the processes weren't happening on a regular basis. But here's the good news. Here's the really good news about when you can start to think about like the processes, you can become whatever you want and whatever you create. All right. It, it requires perseverance. It's going to require you to, to give yourself some grace when life happens, because we all know life's going to happen and you're going to have to be able to and thank goodness that we have a company that you don't have all these requirements you have to meet to keep your business online. That you can truly check out if you need to and come right back and step back in. It does require perseverance, but the secret to your success, it is found in your daily agenda, in the daily processes that you are doing. And if you think about, if you just think about applying this whole law of process from from John Maxwell the goal each day is to build on the day before's progress not not like what happened a year ago not what happened last month but the day before if you can imagine that you can show up just as good as yesterday but maybe 0.01 percent better imagine the progress that you can make so has anybody ever read, I'm curious, those of you on, if y'all have ever read anything from John Maxwell, or have you ever studied anything with his law of process? I had not. So this was like a whole lot of new info for me. Have anybody? No, what is that? What's the one? Oh, Blair sent it to me. It's about success. I don't remember what the name of success it is. Success principles. Yes. Yes. That one. And I'm telling you, the very first page was take ownership a hundred percent of what happens to you. You know, like own it. Mm -hmm. Your attitude is how you chose to respond, and you have to take ownership of that. If you choose to watch Netflix instead of generating conversations you have to take ownership of that and that hit me with a ton of bricks because I was like wait a second <laughs> whoa <laughs> but it's true like when I thought about that and you put that into perspective even with your family you know your spouse your children whatever you have the choice of how you react to them and it's action plus something equals your result 
or I can't remember exactly action, the equation. Action plus effort? Yes, equals the result. And it's like, oh my word. And it's, it's, it's mind blowing. Yeah. And it's so true. And it's being able to apply it, right, Ashley? Like it's, but it does make you really realize, um, it makes you realize in all aspects. Thank you for sharing that. I love that book. That's another one. If you guys have not read J Jack Canfield, Success Principles, they have success principles for teens. Yes, it's really good. I'll show it to you when I see you, Ashley, because my the girls and I started reading it. Um, we read one little excerpt. There's like tiny ones. And so it takes like two minutes to read. We read it with our um, Bible studies in the morning. Um, and it's, it's good because they're old enough now where they can actually like start to learn these life skills. So, um, well, I, if you guys want to know more about this, like search, search up the law of process, because, you know, when I was really thinking about the seasons of network marketing and thinking about the overall process that we go through a lot of times we do, we beat ourselves up. The quickest way to get out of a low is to get into action. The quickest way to grow your business is to get into action. And sometimes, you know, even, even myself being very transparent, like I have to sit down, I have to think what is most important is putting together, you know, a great social media post more important than reaching and connecting to 10 people. Nope, it isn't. What gets into action are conversations. And when you cheat your income producing activities, here's the thing, no one knows it. No one knows it but us, right? But it does often show up on the other end. So something to think about. Um, if it's something that the law of process, if that's something that you guys like or you want to know more, um, let me know. And I can always, always share that with y'all. And the last thing I just wanted to share with y'all tonight is um, maximizing the 20 minutes in your day. And I, I can't remember who I shared this with today, but I'm taking it. If it turns out to be a good um, class, which I really think it, I think it will be today was only day one, but I'm taking um, some training and it's about, it's called a two hour, two hour work day. And um, it really teaches you basically how to build your business in two hours, you know, in the order of doing things. And I know we've talked a lot on this team about income producing activities. Um, and we've talked a lot about how to do, what to do, what's most important. And it looks a little different. It's going to look different for Caitlin than it does Melissa, than it does for Ashley. Um, it does for me but really truly maximizing the 20 minutes a day and just remaining consistent, um, remaining consistent in that and knowing what brings you business. So I want to challenge you. Um, I promise you, if I love this training, I will bring it and taking very good notes. I will bring it to you guys and we will do it together um, and really like talk about it, talk about how to maximize uh, these things that they're doing. And it doesn't even necessarily have to be two hours. You could apply it as one hour a day or 30 minutes a day or, you know, 10 hours total a week or whatever, but it's really talking about how to maximize it. So I want you to th start thinking when you have those conversations, like Caitlin today, when you had that conversation, you had that person come to you, what, how, how did she come like what was it that brought her to you Ashley when you have those connections what is it that brings them to you Melissa when you talk to those people inside the Facebook group what is it that brings them to you do you know why and what you said to the people to get them to trust you to say yes to the Thrive experience and starting to identify what that is because it's different for all of us you guys may can post this thing or make this connection here or say this, and it may not be the exact same way that people would, would come to my inbox, but what is it that you would start to analyze that? Because whatever that is, you want to do more. And it's okay to ask people that. Like, can, can I ask like why, you know, what, what made you say yes? What made you want to experience this? People really like value, um, value that. So um, those were just some of the short things that I had for you guys tonight. Does anybody have any questions or anything that you guys want to talk about? I would like to add something. Please. <laughs> While you're on the topic, um, 
to be completely open, I will tell y'all, a lot of my new people that are entering in conversations with me is because I have been so transparent over what has happened in the last month with my family. Um, and I cannot tell you how many people have said the word transparent and how many people like face to face on messenger has said you didn't have to be transparent but i loved that you are and i'm like well i'm glad that you are because i've got to get it out somewhere but <laughs> they love it they like to know what's going on and all the steps and the processes and you know all those things and so i mean for me and it, it may be my personality like you said that's who I am. I'm very comfortable being transparent and being open and letting people into my life. I have a, a, a wall. I, people don't get too close. Like I'm, I'm very careful, but I will let them in. They can see it, but only few get past my wall. <laughs> but being transparent, people want to know. And they don't want to know if you're getting your hair done. They want to know if... if you know, you have, you need prayer. They want to know if something funny happened with your kid. I mean, let your kid run into a wall and people are going to want to know that and they're going to laugh with you. I, you know, I put on my stories today, my youngest hit, uh, butted heads with somebody and knocked his tooth sideways. And I've gotten three messages over that today. And they're like, you poor soul. And I'm like, nope, just laugh. <laughs> just laugh. You know, but they do, they want to know, and you have to figure out what you're comfortable with. But once you do, own it. Own it. It's so true. And I think people, I love that you brought that up because, you know, people really do connect with the vulnerability parts of our life. And sometimes I, I mean, I am very guilty of this showing, like really just putting out there the, the ins and outs, but not the tough times. Right. And not the, the full transparency of what some things look like behind the scenes, but when you do put it out there and here's the thing, like you can be very private, you can be very open, you get to choose, but even if you're a very private person, you can still put some things out there just about the simple feeling. People connect with that, especially right now, you know, and so I think saying that and being able to say it on stories, because stories are for people who you're already connected with. These are the people who already know about you. Who are, these are not for new people. These are for people who you're connecting with, you're talking to, or people who are trying to get to know who you are. Those are the people who follow you on your stories, not just like random people, right? These are the people who want to learn more about what Caitlin's doing and Melissa's doing. So um, I love that you brought that up because I think that is so incredibly true just to be, just to be vulnerable and to connect. And it does open it up. You know, you don't realize how many people are um, supporting you until you, until you put something out there where you really need it. And you're like, oh my goodness. So um I love that you, you offered that Caitlin, Melissa, you guys have any questions or anything, Caitlin? I, um, I love that, that question that you asked and I'm going to put a list together and I'm going to put it in the newbies chat. Cause I think that is an amazing question. Thank you for asking that. All right. Well, ladies, I am. Go ahead. Did you have something? Hi, Melissa. No, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> um all right well I think let's see here Caitlin you're still maybe maybe thinking about coming for um October for Sunday night so hopefully we'll maybe be able to swing help you swing that and um I'm going to be seeing you other girls next weekend so that's going to be fun you guys I know I know I'm so excited I am um contemplating thinking about for October shifting our um team zoom time around so i'm going to attempt to put together a google um link so i'm going to put that out there um hopefully this week if i can if i can get it done just to try to find a better fit because there are so many people that this time is so challenging for just so we can try and get more people on the live 
I think Monday nights are really hard. And I think this specific time is really hard for people. So I'm going to put that out there. So you guys make sure that you fill it out and pass it on to, you know, others and get them to, to fill it out as well. So we can try to have the best time I'm game for whatever I'll move my family stuff around, um, to have a, um, but I think we've done this one, this time slot for like three months now. And I think it's really challenging for people. Um, I've had probably 15 people tell me this time was not good. So <laughs> I want to do what's best for everyone. So thank y'all for being on and let me know if y'all need anything and I will see you soon. Bye guys. Have a great night.